Okay, this video is about making a box, uh, specifically a box for the Miller Home Draft uh, or Tappa Draft bottles. And I wanted to design this box so that I could carry the bottle with the tap on it in the box, insulated. And then um, when it came time to serve, I could um, slide the bottle out and expose the, the tap. Uh, and and uh, this way, when you're handling the box, everything's inside the box and there's nothing can get you know messed up, knocked off or something. So that's sort of the idea. So the first... Um, First thing I was interested in was the size of the bottles. There's um, there's the Tappa Draft bottle, and then there's the Miller Home Draft bottle, and they're slightly different in size. Um, uh, the height is um, I think is 30 for the Miller Home Draft and 32 for the Tappa Draft, and the the width is 18.8 .8, um, for the Miller Home Draft, and I think it's just very slightly less, maybe 18.5 for the Tappa Draft. So I wanted to go with sort of the largest of those two dimensions so the box would work for either kind. And um, I also needed to measure how, how much space the tap took up above the cap. And so it turns out it takes up about six uh, centimeters. So we have um, also, we have one other, or two other dimensions. There was, a, I think that was point four centimeters for the cardboard and I think I'm going to call that point seven for the foam that I'm going to be used to insulating. So to figure out how big the box should be, first we add the foam and then we add the, the, the bottle and then we add the other foam on the other side of, of the box and then as it just the way it works out you just add in the, the thickness of the the cardboard because when you fold it you get about half of it. Anyway, um, probably not necessary in this case. Cardboard's pretty thin, but um, on the height, um, I wrote uh, the foam plus the height of the, of the uh, bottle plus the foam plus the cardboard, but um, really 32 is is wrong. It needs to be 38 because um, 32 is the bottle with just the cap on it. 38 is with the tap and that's what I wanted to do this time. So I came up with 22.6 and whatever it was there, 41.8. And it, it that um, uh, equates to 8 and 7 eighths and 16 and a half. So those are my two dimensions. So here's the sort of the layout of the box. It's just a very simple box with a tab on the end. Um, all the flaps are the same um, and we're just gonna take a piece of um, flat cardboard stock that um, that I got from the um, from the uh, appliance store and we're gonna make this box exactly to the size that we want and it's like you know people might say oh well, why don't you just go get a box and you know padded out with extra foam or something and I could have done that but uh, I sort of wanted um, wanted to do it this way so anyway the the uh, flaps are half of the so half of eight and seven eighths is four and seven sixteenths so that's how big the flaps are so one of the things I need to know is sort of what's the overall uh, dimensions of of the um, flat of cardboard that I need and it turns out it's it's uh, uh, 25 and 3 eighths by 35 and a half and then I have this it, this other tab that I need to add on it doesn't really matter how big that is it's just you know, it, it, it can be anything. it's sort of the ragged size so so here's my uh, flat of cardboard that I got and I just want to make sure that it's um, it's going to be big enough. One flat of that is going to be big enough for my um, for my uh, project, which it is. And so, what you need to do is you need to start out with as straight of a line as you can. So you're going to try to get two edges that are that are straight and perpendicular with each other. So I tried to cut down a an existing fold in that box, um, trying to get as straight of a line as I can. And then um, I'm coming off of that one of those. I've got two two edges right now that are that are perpendicular to each other and are and are straight or you know as straight as I could get them. Uh, and I'm going down here and I'm measuring off the distances for the for the grid that, that you saw uh, momentarily ago. And 
just getting it on the one side and then flipping it around and measuring from that same straight edge those same distances on the other side and uh, then I'll take a, a straight edge and put it across those two marks and get get my my grid on the uh, written written out on the um, on the flat of cardboard so here I am um, lining up the marks and drawing a line so I'm gonna this is this is the um, the four equidins equidistance since it's a square box there there um, I guess we said eight and seven eighths apart So I went through and did all those, and then I rotated the box 90 degrees, and I'm doing the other, the other uh, markings now. And in this case, what I did instead of um, instead of trying to get a long straight edge, um, I, I put marks on either end, and then I uh, decided I'd just try to use the um, the chalk line to to transfer the marks across. Which worked okay. I, I, I think a, a straight stick probably would be better. And in fact, I I later found a, a stick to use that I'm using the project. And one of the things I tried to do here is is the the corrugation of the cardboard. Um, it's going to fold on one of those corrugated uh, lines no matter what you do. So uh, I tried to make sure I was on the same line because that that one quote unquote straight edge on the edge. Um, might not have been quite as straight, could have been off like a quarter inch or something like that. So anyway, uh, so I'm putting the chalk line, I made a little hole with my knife and I'm putting the chalk line in the in the hole and then um, and then uh, drawing the chalk line out taut and, and snapping it on there so I'll have a guide for when I um, these are these are fold, these are all fold lines, they're not cut lines. Um, so here's the third straight edge um, that I'm cutting off. So the one that's towards the sky there was was a straight, and then the one on the right was a straight. But the one on the ground, that one, um, was just the ragged one. And this is this is sort of the the tab ragged one. I'm cutting the tab actually incorrectly here. We'll see later that that those angles are not supposed to be out there because that, that's uh, basically going to be cut off because that's part of the flap. Anyway, so here is when when you cut flaps in cardboard I noticed that um, there's always a space in between the two flaps and so rather than just cut one line with my knife down the middle where my 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 mark is I put just a spacer piece of cardboard there and uh, cut it, um, cut a, a little bit of a space between the tabs, and even on the end, you can cut, um, you can you can make that uh, tab the right the right width. They're slightly narrower than more narrow than the box. So two two cuts on either side of the mark, um, about a cardboard thickness distance apart off the off the middle, and then. Uh, you can just pull that right out of there and I do that a whole bunch of different times which I'm not going to show you all of them but basically you just go through and cut all of those out there's a whole bunch of them cut the top a little bit so you can pull it out and here's where I'm uh, fixing the tab uh, situation that I had before I those weren't, weren't cut in the right place but that's uh, that's how it should have been first place so here's the flat and it's um, marked and cut and now I just need to make sure that I can when I fold it it folds in the right spot so here's a, uh, a piece of molding um, scrap piece of molding that I had and by smacking it with the hammer we, uh, we, we crush the cardboard so that when we bend it, it it bends right on that one spot exactly where we want it to, to go and we get a pretty accurate box um, without um, odd uh, odd dimensions and whatnot. So you can see it sort of folds up real nice after uh, after you crush that those areas, and you don't really have to worry too too much about it. 
Um, now I'm going to rotate it and do the, the, the flaps. The flaps, um, as it turns out, there was a sort of a natural crease or a, you know, this box wasn't perfectly virgin when I got it, so some of these uh, folded nicely right where I wanted them to. And some of the other ones, um, there was a sort of a, a, a bruise or whatever on the original cardboard, so I had to sort of take my time and fold them a little bit more carefully, otherwise it would have folded more on that, on that sort of bruise that it had. But worked out pretty good. So here's the box where the folds have already been made. And now I need to glue the, uh, the box together on the one seam and try to get as much hot glue on there quickly as I can before it starts cooling off. And then lay down, just lay it while it's flat on the ground, just uh, press the uh, press the two sides together like that. And so you end up with this. Something that you're probably very familiar with from, uh, from flattening them and sticking them in your uh, recycling bin. Um, but this is finally taking shape to the to the point of being a box. Yeah. So uh, folding it together looks like it's working pretty good. And um, the next day I continued the project, um, taping by taping the bottom. And today's project is going to be the piece, the insulation work. Um, so I'm measuring the box, and it, you know, we're coming out right, uh, you know, whatever it is, is eight and seven eighths or something like that. Um, pretty consistent, I would say. So we're in good shape there, and just double checking to make sure that the foam that I cut is the right size. So again, uh, not rocket science here, just marking up the um, the foam. Oh, the foam, by the way, is cost me like nine bucks for five six sheets of it um, it's sort of a ripoff because this stuff is probably I mean there's so little material in it it's all air mostly um, but you know you even though it's not a doesn't seem like you're getting a good deal I figured I'm not going to use that much of it so what I'm doing now is I'm cutting the top and the bottom so these pieces will go flat in the top and flat in the bottom and I should, probably should have got another blade for this knife to do this because it sort of crumbles. This is beadboard, I guess they call it or whatever, but it's 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 messy. Is one of the reasons why I'm doing it outside. Um, but you know the beads all come unstuck and and fly all over the place. Um, but if you draw the knife through sort of sort of gently and over multiple passes, seems to do a little bit better. Not so much. Um, debris uh, getting peeled off to the, the side of the, of the cut. So um, I made this square piece going in here and drops right down, drops right down into the bottom like that. So now we'll make the side pieces. So we have to know how tall to make them so I'm measuring that and I want to subtract one from the top because I'm going to put that that other one, that other square one in, and it looks like we're coming up with uh, just shy of 15 inches, which is exactly what we had planned. I think if you convert whatever it is, 38 centimeters, you'll see it as just shy of 15. Um, and the, the other dimension is not going to be the same as earlier. It's going to be a little bit less because we want to um, we want to sort of interleave the, the edges um, rather than having different sizes these will I'll have four of the same size and I'll interleave them and so I think it comes out to be about eight I'm not sure I think so yeah I'm not sure if I tried to cut it eight in a little bit or, or what I but you know just basically if you're gonna do this measure and cut whatever you find there so seen this before um, basically mark one end the other and I uh, use a straight edge and um, 
and and cut that for three three of them and then the uh, the other one I um, I cut out of that other piece there so anyway I got it up with four um, pieces of foam same size and everything and we'll stick them in the box So, drop the first one easy. The more you got in there, the harder it gets. <laughs> but you can get them all in there. Third one goes in the same way. Pretty easy. And then the last one you sort of got to work on a little bit. So I push it straight down in there. So there you have it five sides done and then that other square piece can go on the top so here's the other piece so next we want to make the um, the hole in the top for the um, for the uh, for the tap to stick out so what I did, um, uh, oh, let's just make sure the bottle fits in there. Yep, perfect. Exactly as we had planned. I wasn't surprised. I knew that it was going to work. So here we're going to try to just freehand a, a place for where the, where the tap is going to stick out. So I just freehanded on there with a pencil there. And... Um, what I did is I made a little a little blank thing that's just a scrap so that it would have a, something to back up against because I'm going to drill this out. Figure it'd be a little bit neater if I tried to drill it than to try to use the blade the uh, the the, uh, the razor blade on it. So uh, tape it shut a little bit just so it doesn't fly open when I'm trying to drill, and then take the drill to it. long video this time. So apologize for that. I usually try to cut out a little bit more, but I left a lot of detail in this one. So there we have. We have a nice hole in there. And now we have to make a hole in this. And I you could make a hole in it, put it on the tap on the bottle and then put the tap on the bottle, but I didn't want to do that. So what I ended up doing is cutting this piece of foam in half so that I'd be able to put it on a bottle that's already tapped because it's sort of a pain to tap these bottles a pain in you know as it is much less to try to have to tap the bottle when you've got you know it's in a box or something because you wouldn't be able to hold it to unscrew the cap etc so first thing I'm going to do is cut this piece of foam in half um, right through the center as close to the center as I can get and trying to do a neat job on this one especially because I don't want it to be too crumbly again I should probably have one knife for the foam that's really really sharp and then the other the other one for the cardboard but anyway I, I got a, a larger circle that I'm gonna put on the back side and so um, the purpose of this is because the, the the shoulder of the bottle sort of spreads out really quickly after the tap you know after the, the neck so I am um, I have to sort of thin the foam out and I didn't figure out a great way to do this, but basically, if you go from like the neck of the bottle to the shoulder of the bottle over that three quarters of an inch or so, it really spreads out a lot. So what I'm going to do is try to sort of do the best I can um, with a razor blade and just sort of 
you know, cut at that angle and see if I can sort of make it so that it fits, um, fits the neck and the shoulder of the bottle. I mean, I could have just cut a big old hole out of it, but I was trying to be as insulated as I could. So I'll, um, you know, go ahead and gnaw through this uh, thing without trying to cut my finger off at an angle like that. And so it ended up looking like like this. Um, not not perfect, but you know, better than better than just a big huge hole in it, I think. And so do both of those. And then um, here's what it's what it looks like, you know, if you're getting ready to go to a party, you carry it like this, right? Taps in there, it's cold, you're ready to go. When you get there, you open it up and you switch these um, pre prepare them for uh, orient them so that they the holes are in the proper location then you pull the tap up and you sort of concurrently fold down um, the flaps and then you're done you're ready to serve now So you've carried it with the tap protected and then you delivered it and you set it up and now you're outside and you have um, you have your your keg ready to go. And you can also uh, expand upon this by um, making say a double tapper like this one. This one's the same except for it's got two taps. And this other box, shorter you see, is not designed to hold the kegs with the taps but it's a three hauler so basically you can put three kegs in there um, keep them cold well so uh, that's it hope you enjoyed it